Hello. If you're watching this right now, it can only mean that you've enrolled in a history course at Tarrant County College. My name is Dr. Ryan Pettengill, and I'll be your professor for the next several weeks. What I hope to do in this video is to um, familiarize you with a few of the guidelines, expectations, and maybe most importantly, how you navigate your way through this course through Blackboard. Um, what I'd like you to do, if you've not already done this, is I'd like you to put me on pause for just a second and I would want you to go uh, and download a copy of the syllabus. Now there's a couple different places that you can find the syllabus, but probably the easiest would be in the Start Here tab of Blackboard. So log into Blackboard and then on your left, it should be the second from the top, there's a button that's called Start Here. Click it and the first thing that should pop up at you should be the course syllabus. Go ahead and download that, come back when you're ready. Now just for the good of the order, the other place that you can find a syllabus should you need it at some point in the semester would be course information. Uh, we'll go through these uh, buttons kind of line by line throughout this video, but for the time being I want to focus on the syllabus. This is, of course, an online class and that means that we don't get to meet face to face, which means that you don't hear me making important announcements on a weekly basis, you don't get to ask me questions as they might arise in your own mind, uh, at least on a face to face level. But um, there are a lot of effective ways to communicate with me and I always like to tell my online students that communication really is key in an online course. Best, most efficient way to get a hold of me is through email. Uh, my email address is uh, listed at the top of the syllabus right there. I check the address regularly. And there's a very good chance that if you get me the message before 3 o'clock and between Monday and Thursday, there's a good chance that I'll respond on the same day. If it's after 3 or if it's on the weekend, it will be a little bit slower, but I'd like to believe that I'm accessible at those points as well. Um, you will also see an office phone number if you want to give me a call and uh, talk to me directly. Sometimes it does make a lot more sense to do it that way. Uh, please feel free to do so. If I don't answer, leave me a voicemail, and when you do, please be sure that you identify yourself as a Tarrant County student. Um, that'll speed things up on both of our ends. In any case, um, if you need to meet with me directly, if you'll go ahead and email me or give me a call and let me know what time or day will work for you, I'll do my very best to accommodate your schedule. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about the course so far. History 1301 is the first half of U.S. history. We're going to begin our class in what I call the pre-Columbian time period, in other words, before 1492, before Christopher Columbus and his uh, so-called discovery of the Americas, and it will end in 1877 and by the time that we get to the end of the course you'll have a very good understanding as to why we're ending the course in 1877. But in any case, uh, the things that we're going to cover in here are going to be more than just your political or presidential history. It'll certainly go above and beyond military history. Uh, by trade, I am a social historian, so of course I'm concerned about political history and things of that sort, but what really concerns me are the people that don't oftentimes make it into history books, and I'm hopeful that you'll have a deeper and better appreciation for history um, through this approach. What I'd like to talk about now would be your required textbooks. Um, there is one required book. Uh, it is entitled America and Narrative History. You can find it at the bookstore. As a matter of fact, you should be able to find it, from what I understand, under any history class at the bookstore. Uh, it's written by authors George Brown Tyndall and David E. Shai. Um, in any case, it is available both at the bookstore but also on Amazon as well. Now there are a couple other books that you are going to need, but the good news is I have already uploaded them in Blackboard for you. Let me talk to you about what they are and then I'll show you where you find them. The first book that you need is a book by Frederick Douglass. It's entitled My Bondage and My Freedom. 
Now the nice thing about this book is it's very widely read and I would be surprised if you couldn't find it in any local library. So if you want a hard copy of the book and you don't want to spend any money on it, there's a very, very good chance that your local library probably has a copy, maybe even two. Um, other places that you can find it, of course, would be Barnes & Noble. I'd be very surprised if they didn't have a copy there. Um, I would also be surprised if half-price books didn't have it and have it for considerably cheaper than anyone else. And, of course, you can find it on Amazon. The point that I'm trying to make here is I don't care what copy you have, what edition it is, what the cover looks like, what historian wrote the introduction, it doesn't matter to me as far as that's concerned. What I want is the full, unabridged, original version of Frederick Douglass, My Bondage and My Freedom. Okay. Um, again, I've already provided a copy for you on Blackboard and I'll show you where to find it as soon as I talk about the next book. The next book that you need is a book by Paul E. Johnson entitled Sam Patch, The Famous Jumper. Um, it's probably less likely that you're going to find these at any kind of local bookstore. You might be able to find it at a library, but um, there's probably a good chance that Amazon's your best bet when it comes to Sam Patch. Again, the good news is I have uploaded a copy on Blackboard. Now let me show you where you can find this. Um, we started out in the, in, in the Start Here tab, and of course it's got a syllabus, it's also got a brief bio, bio, biographical kind of background on me, and lastly, it's got a video entitled How to Be Successful in This Class. Um, I highly recommend taking a look at that video when you have a, when you have a second. If you'll go down to the Course Information tab, right underneath Start Here, you will see the first thing that pops up at you is a folder called Online Texts. Open it. The first thing that will pop up will be a copy of My Bondage and My Freedom. So even if you don't want to shell out any cash, even if you don't want to have a hard copy book, you do have access to My Bondage and My Freedom right now. Please start reading it in some form or fashion. Um, the other book, Sam Patch, is also in the online text folder, but as you'll notice, it's in there as a folder. It's not going to be as seamless or as concise as Frederick Douglass. It's going to be broken apart into several different chunks, but it is available for you. It is free of charge, and um, if you wanted to go ahead and take advantage of that, I would certainly recommend it. Um, Back to the syllabus, let's go back and uh, go through some of the uh, finer points that I think will help you navigate this class. Um, much of what is in the syllabus, I'm going to assume that you'll be reading on your own, but please read it carefully because the syllabus is a binding contract between you and me, so if there's something that does not make sense, by all means, please let me know. Um, I want you to go down to the bottom of page three. That's when the course outline begins. As you can see, the course has been broken down for us on a week-by-week -week basis. On any given week, you'll see what we'll be discussing in class, or I guess through Blackboard. Um, you will also see uh, some things that are due, whether they be quizzes or discussion forums, or in some cases, papers or uh, exams. It's broken down line by line, so this really will be our Bible for the next uh, several weeks when it comes to your completion of this class. Let's spend just a second on week one, just for an example. As you can see, you have both a quiz that's due and you also have a discussion forum that's due by the end of the week. Now, I'll, I'll explain a little bit better as far as what these assignments entail, but for the time being, I just want to make sure that the reading assignment, the written assignments, the participatory assignments, all of these assignments are deeply embedded in the week-by-week -week breakdown of the course. Um, that's it in a nutshell. As you can see, the next few pages will be a breakdown of what we're doing due dates and important things that you need to pay attention to. Um, at this point, the question that should be on each of your minds um, should be how do I get the best grade in this course? And I can explain how to do that and hopefully I can help you to work smarter and not necessarily harder. So if you go down to the middle of page 7, I want to talk to you a little bit about the evaluation procedures. Um, 
in the middle of page seven, we're going to begin with what goes into doing well in this course. I would say probably the best thing, the easiest thing that you could do to really rack up a lot of points would be the participation section. Remember how I told you that each week you're going to have a discussion forum that's due? The syllabus will point this out. Now, you can complete those discussion forums in Blackboard. As a matter of fact, everything that you complete will be in Blackboard. So right underneath the Course Informations tab, you'll see a tab called Discussions. Click it. Um, once you click Discussions, you will see that I've uploaded all 15 discussions for the semester, and theoretically, you could do every one of them by the end of the week. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that, but in any case, if you wanted to do that, you could. You could. Okay, But um, they are all there, and on any given week, you're going to have at least one that's going to be due, okay? including week one. Um, as far as the discussions are concerned, what you do to complete it is click on the word, for example, Discussion Forum 1. Click on it, and then the next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to create a thread. Now, many of these discussion forum questions will tell you to respond to your classmates. In other words, you'll be able to see your classmates' thoughts and opinions. My hope is at some point in the semester you do that, that you do reply to them. But what's most important is that you create a thread. Um, now, the reason that I'm being so forthcoming with this is because it's easiest for me to see that you are participating if you actually create a thread. If you're responding to somebody else, that's great, but sometimes that can fall through the cracks. So I highly, highly encourage you to create a thread, okay? Um, I don't know if you had an English teacher or professor that made you keep a journal uh, in a class that emphasized writing, but that's kind of how I approach the discussion forums. I'm not really going to grade these discussion forums the way that I would a paper or even maybe a quiz, but I am going to look at them, and the most important thing that you can do is actually complete them week by week. Okay. Now, the next easiest thing that you can do to do well in this class would be to complete the quizzes. And you'll notice right under Discussions you will see uh, Quizzes. Go ahead and click the Quiz button and again you'll see that I've uploaded every quiz for the semester and any kind of relevant information that you will need to complete any one quiz. Um, this week you need to complete Quiz 1 which is a little bit different than any other quiz that you're going to take in this semester, considering it's going to be an opinionated question, okay? Again, the most important thing for you to do is to actually complete the quiz. Um, none of these quizzes are going to be worth more than three points, so none of them are really going to make or break your grade, but taken together collectively, they do represent a relatively good chunk of the points in this class, okay? Um, every other quiz, aside from quiz one, is going to have an accompanying um, document, shall we say, that I'll need you to read through first and use it to complete the quiz. Um, the quiz will be very forthcoming when it comes to exactly how you're supposed to use the document, but uh, none of the documents are much more than about a page, so it's not really a lot of heavy lifting from a reading standpoint. Um, you have six quizzes throughout the semester. In other words, I'm going to give you six, but you're only responsible for five, which means that if you do all six and you do all six well, you can earn up to three points of extra credit. It also means if you missed a quiz and it turns into a zero, um, you can still score 15 out of a possibility of 15. Okay. In any case, Keep an eye out for when those quizzes are due. I generally do try to email you as a reminder, uh, but it's a long semester for me as well, so please keep an eye on that syllabus at all times. From here, the lifting is going to get a little bit heavier. Um, if you click on My Paper Assignments or Paper Assignments towards the bottom of Blackboard on the left, you will see guidelines and a drop box for both papers one and two. Now, the reason that those two adjoining books are so important is because they're going to be the basis of both Papers 1 and Paper 2. For instance, Frederick Douglass is going to be a really big part of your completion of Paper 1. Okay? If you download the guidelines, you'll see what I'm talking about. Each paper is going to be two to three pages. 
uh, in length. You'll double space everything. Normal margins will be the rule of thumb for this course. Um, no less than two pages, no more than three pages. Um, I've uploaded a few resources for both papers in Blackboard to kind of get your brain going in the proper direction when it comes to engaging that central question, and I would highly recommend taking a look at those as the due dates for those assignments approach. Each one of these papers is worth 10% of your cumulative grade for a grand total of 20%. Now, aside from the papers, you are going to have two exams, one midterm exam and one final exam. Uh, underneath the quizzes tab in Blackboard, you will see an exams tab. If you open it, what you're going to find is a midterm review guide, a final exam review guide. Uh, you'll see a midterm review discussion. It's a video lecture uh, of me kind of pointing out important ideas and concepts that are going to be highly relevant to uh, either the midterm exam or the final exam. Um, when those exams go live, one of the things that you're going to see, uh, as a matter of fact, you're not going to see the exams themselves in there right now, but as the due dates approach, you will see that they will open up and you will have access to them. The exams consist of a combination of multiple choice questions, short answer essay questions, and one long essay question. Each exam is worth 25% of your cumulative grade. Now, there are a few other things about the syllabus and the requirements on a week-to-week -week basis that I need you to be mindful of. The first would be the online readings. Um, one of the things that I like to emphasize in my class is documents, primary documents. Primary documents are first-hand witness accounts, and this is what historians use to write history. So for an example, um, a, a, an article in the Fort Worth Star or the Dallas Morning News uh, would be an example of a primary source because that's a first-hand account. Um, these documents are available to you in the uh, online texts uh, folder of Blackboard. You will see another folder that's entitled um, Online Readings. Go ahead and download each as you see fit, but certainly on a week-by-week -week basis. The other thing that I need you to pay close attention to would be the Lessons tab of Blackboard. It's right in between Discussions and Quizzes. If you click it, what you're going to see are two folders. First one is a Video Lectures folder. The second one would be a PowerPoint Presentation folder. If you look at any given week, for example, week one, you're going to see that you're responsible for watching um, several video lectures. The way that I approach this course is I try to make it as close to a lecture course as possible. I don't like courses that just kind of throw students to the wolves and say, all right, go read these three chapters and tell me what you think about them. Um, what you're getting is a miniature version of what I would give you if this class was meeting on a face-to-face -face basis. So for instance, this week, what you're responsible for watching are video lectures one through three. Um, you can watch those, and if you'd like, if you, you, you'll, you'll click the video lectures folder, and then click unit one, and then you'll see the first three lectures. If you go back to lessons, you'll see that the PowerPoint presentations have also been uploaded for you, and if you open up the Unit 1 folder, again, what you see is the accompanying PowerPoint presentations. Now, my PowerPoints are not designed to write down every single word. They're more or less a visual aid to help you get through my lectures. If they help you, great. If you don't like them, don't want them, you don't have to have them, okay? In any case, um, each week you'll be responsible for several video lectures. Some weeks will be more than others. Um, that's about it in terms of the assignments, the due dates, and what you need to be doing on a week-by-week -week basis. Uh, one of the things that I will also say is to take a quick look in the middle of page 8 and take a look at my grading scale. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that if I've got somebody that's very close to the next letter grade, I don't round them up. Uh, but what I will say is, please don't expect that if you're four or five points away from the next letter grade, that I'll be grading on a curve, or there will be some sort of consideration taken. Close enough is not necessarily good enough, okay? 
Underneath the grading scale, there's a few things that I think that you should know involving our late work policy. Uh, quizzes are not accepted late. If you miss the due date of a quiz, unless you've got a very, very, very good reason, most of the time that you can document, the quiz simply turns into a zero. Uh, late papers I will accept, but keep in mind that there is a penalty, a two and a half point penalty per day for every day that they're late. If you should need to make up an exam, the responsibility is going to be on you to get with me in some form or fashion so that we can make arrangements for that. Um, that's the class in a nutshell, everybody. Uh, again, there are several other important points in this uh, syllabus that I think are worth reading carefully, including with the withdrawal policy. Uh, if you choose to withdraw from this class uh, as, as the semester winds down, please understand that there are consequences for doing that, especially consequences that involve your financial aid. Um, the other thing that I might take a quick look at would be academic honesty, maybe better put, academic dishonesty toward the end of page 9. Um, plagiarism is a serious offense and it will be treated very seriously in this class. Aside from that, um, it's been very nice meeting all of you. I'm looking forward to a productive semester which, with each of you. If there's anything that I can do to make this experience to be a little bit better for you, please don't hesitate to let me know. Hopefully your pencils are sharpened and your glasses, should you wear them, are polished and you're ready to hit the ground running. I certainly am.